The one question that I always get asked before coming here, after coming here, all the time is why did I chose to come to Hong Kong in the very first place? So in this video, I want to talk about why I chose to come to Hong Kong to study and some expectations for this realities that I've experienced after studying here for one year as an international undergrad student. So let's just get into it. Well, there can only be many reasons to come to Hong Kong for a study. For me, there were three main reasons. First, I wanted to start off my career in the Asia-Pacific division of the finance industry, for which Hong Kong is one of the best, if not the best, to start off a career in the APEC region of the finance industry. So that was my first reason. The second reason I came here was I wanted to learn Chinese language and understand their culture. See, being able to understand the language, speak the language, and understand their culture as well, can only open up so much opportunities in the future. And the third reason was because I was offered a lot of scholarships. Let's be honest here, who doesn't like free money? So the scholarships that I got covers all my study abroad expenses. So Hong Kong became the optimal location for me for studying abroad. Now less about me and let's talk about the expectations for this reality. This is the fun part. I first expected Hong Kong to be a very modern city filled with skyscrapers and beautiful skylines. But the reality is it is still very much filled with skyscrapers and stuff but it is jam-packed alongside these Chinese historical heritage buildings and those British colonial buildings. So we are able to experience both traditional historical elements together with the modern hustle bustle stuff. So if you like these traditional sentimental historical stuff but also crave the modern chic lifestyle from time to time you're going to love Hong Kong. The second expectation that I had was I expected Hong Kong, the whole city, to be filled with residential buildings, shopping malls, roads, markets, railways, etc. Making the city look totally man-made. But only when I got here, I realized that Hong Kong is the place that will allow you to experience both the nature and green sceneries as much as you're able to experience these luxuriously built man-made facilities. Uh, a lot of mountains and land here in Hong Kong is left untouched. Maybe this is one of the main reasons why Hong Kong's housing property is the most expensive in the world, more expensive than any other cities in the world. A lot of land here is untouched. And this is a good thing that allows people to do a lot of outdoor activities. So if you love to do outdoor sports like cycling, hiking, surfing, you will never regret coming to Hong Kong. And the level of outdoor activities people in Hong Kong do is just massive. It, it really shocked me because in my country, people never like to do outdoor sports, especially hiking or cycling. And I can also confidently say that Hong Kong is the place that has the highest proportion of nature versus these very high-end man-made buildings, if you get what I mean. Third expectation that I had was I expected that I will be able to practice my Mandarin speaking skills here a lot by using the language, which is one of the main reasons I came here for. But unfortunately, most of the locals here do not like to speak the language, especially if you're not good at the language and they don't understand you and they have to ask you again and again what you're trying to say, it irritates them a bit. So I use English most of the times because they understand my English more than my Mandarin. So I am not able to practice Mandarin that much here. I don't think they entirely hate to speak the language. It's just that they are very fast paced and they are in survival mode. They are very businessy and if they don't understand you, they're like, I don't understand you. I have a lot of other customers to serve which is not a bad thing. It's a good thing that in Hong Kong, the business moves very, very fast. For example, when you go to a restaurant, right after you finish your dish, they will come and pick up your plate, which kind of indicates that you have finished your plate, please leave the table for the other customers. Not all restaurants are like that, but most of the local uh, food stalls are like that. So they are in a very business survival mode. The point here is that in reality, I'm not able to practice my Mandarin as much as I thought I'd be able to, which leads me to my fourth expectation. Another huge, huge expectation that I had before coming to Hong Kong was that I'll be in a very international environment. If you look up at the international universities ranking, the City University of Hong Kong is ranked first, followed by the University of Hong Kong. Time Higher Education states that 50% of the undergraduate students in the University of Hong Kong are non-local students. That's true, but most of the non-local students here are exchange students, so they're not full-time. So in reality, it is not as international that I thought it would be. I'm not saying it's not international, it is very very international, but my expectations were just so high and the reality was this much, <laughs> if you get what I mean. The local students here tend to stick with each other and they like to speak in Cantonese, so if you're an international student, it's a little bit harder to break into the local group. It's just that if there were like eight 
local students in a group and you are the only non-local for the favor of the majority they're going to try to speak in Cantonese so that they understand each other better and it also really depends on the major you take for example if you are taking Chinese studies you're definitely going to be with a lot of other non-local students than if you were studying other majors. If you're talking about CUHK, the college that you get into will also matter a lot when it comes to internationalism. For example, for me, I'm a Morningsider. I'm from Morningside College and I cannot imagine a place that's more international than Morningside College. Literally, people here come from a lot of nations, literally running from A to Z, from Austria to Zimbabwe. So yeah, I'm not saying that local students here are not friendly. They are very, very friendly, in fact. But like I said, if there are 10 students and you're the only non-local student, for the convenience of the majority, they're going to speak in Cantonese. Something like that. These are the four expectations versus realities that I have. If you want to know more about Hong Kong as an international student, please comment down below what you want to know and I'll make a video out of it. You can also go check out my other vlogs here to see what kind of hostels you're going to be living as an international student or a student in Hong Kong. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't, that would mean a lot to me. Until then, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.